how are you? At this very special time, as we gather as family and friends and very much part of the community, we gather at the Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. We gather to remember who we are, what we have been and even what we have lost, for so many are suffering today. The scene of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ represents much more than a touching story or a fairy tale. It is a reminder of the most amazing reality that God came to the earth in the shape of our Lord Jesus, that he spoke to the world, peace on earth, God is with us. A God who acts, who still speaks and came, and who still comes to us today. A God who is always with us, one who is with us now and very much at the centre of our community-led service of worship, of togetherness and love. In a year of so many difficulties and changes, God is here. Isn't that amazing? We do not walk alone, for as the angel said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I am announcing to you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. My dear friends, I just want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. I hope it is really great, a really joyful one. Go out and celebrate. And uh, of course, remember the Christmas story of our Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, it is time to celebrate and give thanks also for what we have. So I'd just like to wish you a Merry Christmas and say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen. Christmas. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that Saint Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled and snug in their beds while visions were of sugar plums dancing their heads. And Mary in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of this new fallen snow gave, a, gave the luster of midday to objects blown. 
When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver, so lovely and quick, I knew in a moment it must be seven minutes Nick. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prance and Vixen, on Common, on Cupid, and Donna and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild barricade fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky. <coughs> So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in our twinkling, I heard on the roof a uh, passing and pouring of each little hoof. As I drew in my head, and was turning around. Down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and acid. <clears throat> His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow and his beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth and he smoked in it and settled his head with a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump and right jolly, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went strange to his work, straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his tight team, gave a whistle and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight. Merry Christmas to you all and all a good night. The end.
Happy Christmas, good folk of Strathnairn. It's Humphrey here. I want to share with you my favorite Christmas story. It's the story of the littlest camel. Once upon a time, a little camel joined a caravan crossing the desert. Hurry along, snorted the big brown camel from the back of the caravan. Hurry along or we'll never catch up. He's going as fast as he can, said Mother Camel. You can't ask for more than that. And the littlest camel? The littlest camel said nothing, for it was all he could do to keep moving. Up the sand dunes and down the sand dunes, over the mountains and around the rocky plains. He had done nothing but walk for weeks. And when the walking was over, he would sleep, fast and deep, snuggled at his mother's side. He shouldn't even be here, grunted the big brown camel. He's not big enough to carry anything. And he's slow, much too slow. But it's not his fault, said Mother Camel. How many times do I have to tell you the camel driver made a mistake? He picked me out at the market, just where he got you. But he didn't see my baby beside me. By the time we reached the desert, he noticed, and it was too late to turn back. Well, I'm not going to get left behind, I promise you that, the big camel grunted. And the littlest camel didn't say a word. He just tried to keep his legs moving. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that was when someone shouted, The star has stopped. Look, there's the town of Bethlehem. We're almost there, said Mother Camel. The littlest camel smiled. He could not wait to rest his tired legs. But as they entered the town, everyone started to speed up, for the guys in the front of the caravan were anxious to reach their destination. And maybe that's why it happened. Everyone was in a rush to get there. When they turned the corner in one of Bethlehem's narrow streets, the littlest camel tripped and fell tumbling to the ground. The big brown camel stepped right over him. I'm not waiting for you, he grunted, and even though Mother Camel turned and tried to stop, the camel driver was in such a rush that he moved her back to the line. The little camel, littlest camel, picked himself up, leg by bony leg. Then he ran as fast as those legs would carry him after his mother and the rest of the caravan. Through the streets he followed them, always just that little bit too far behind. But when they finally stopped, every single one of them falling on their knees before a simple stable, the littlest camel could not slow down. So he tripped and tumbled one more time, past camels and servants, the three magi with their bright gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. The littlest camel landed head first in front of a manger. He shook his head and opened his eyes. The littlest camel was face to face with a baby. The baby called Jesus smiled at him and patted his camel nose. That's when the littlest camel heard these words. Well done, little camel. You traveled far to see my son and you never gave up. From now on, it will be the littlest camel who will bring gifts to the children of this land. And that is why, to this very day, the children in some countries receive their gifts from the back of a camel, a little camel just like the one who brought joy to the child in the manger. So, have a blessed and peaceful Christmas. Goodbye. Here we have an Advent ring. It has four candles in it. It has holly and ivy and greenery round about it. And it was first started as a custom in Scandinavia many years ago but many other people now use it and follow it and I make one every year for our own home and when we are allowed to be in church we have one in the church as well. So I'm going to sing the song that will tell us what the meaning of all the different candles is in this time of Advent as we wait and walk towards Christmas. Christmas is coming, the church is glad to sing, and let the Advent candles brightly burn in a ring. 
the first is for God's promise to put the wrong things right and bring to our darkness the hope of love and light. Christmas is coming, the church is glad to sing, and let the Advent candles brightly burn in the ring. The second's for the prophets who said that Christ would come with good news for many and angry words for some. Christmas is coming, the church is glad to sing and let the Advent candles brightly burn in a ring. The third is for the Baptist who said prepare the way Make ready for Jesus, both now and every day. Christmas is coming, the church is glad to sing, and let the Advent candles brightly burn in a ring. The fourth is for the Virgin, who mothered God's own Son, and sang how God's justice is meant for everyone. Christmas is coming, the church is glad to sing, and let the Advent candles brightly burn in a ring. At last we light the candle, kept new for Christmas Day. The shines bright for Jesus, brought now and ever and here to stay. Christmas is coming, the church is glad to sing, and let the Advent candles brightly burn in a ring. Christ is among us, the candles in the ring. Remind us that our Saviour will light up everything. Here's a story about two shepherds. They're named Zebedee and Jacob, and they were out in the fields looking after their sheep. Unlike nowadays, being a shepherd was not a great job. It meant very little pay for staying out all night and looking after someone else's sheep. But once they've checked them, they tended to doze off. Suddenly, Zebedee woke with a start. He heard something like singing, and then his eyes was, were almost blinded by a bright light. Jacob, he shouted, what's that in the sky? It can't be morning already. What, what do you want? replied Jacob as he woke. He cupped his hands over his eyes. Wow, that, that really is bright. Yeah, said Jebedee. I'm scared. Me too, replied Jacob. A third voice spoke. Don't be afraid. Who's that? Who said that? whispered Jebedee. Is that you, Simon? asked Jacob in a shaky voice. Don't be afraid, the voice repeated. I bring good news and will bring great joy to all, all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, he has been born great today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognise him by this, this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel is joined by a vast host of all the angels of heaven, praise, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those who, whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds looked at each other and said to each other, both at the same time, Let's go and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and arrived just before the sun was coming up. After asking all around, they found Mary and Joseph in a stable with their baby boy lying in a manger. When they saw him, they both went weak in the knees, knelt down and worshipped him. They told Mary and Joseph what had happened to them, and they both were amazed. Afterwards, they told everyone they met what had happened and what the angel had said about the child and where to find him. Everyone who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, and many came to worship him too. Just like the shepherds, we want to tell everybody in Stratton Aaron and celebrate the baby boy lying manger.
to keep on plugging on with, with your precious lot. Being a long time little donkey through the winter's night. Don't give up. Hello, we are James and Jacqueline Thompson of Daviant Church. This is a short program about Christmas or Christmas symbols. Christmas are Christmas decorations with Christmas symbols on them. They help Christians to remember that Christmas is the celebration of Jesus' birthday. They are often used on Christmas trees in churches. They were first made by Francis Spencer at the Ascension Lutheran Church in Danville, Virginia, in the United States. She also thought of the word Chrismon, which is a combination of Christ and monogram. The idea quickly spread to other churches. Chrismons are always colored white and gold. White is the liturgical color. Christmas and symbolizes that Jesus was pure and perfect. Gold symbolizes his majesty and glory. We will show you the Christmas and tell the meaning of each one. The first is the cross. The cross symbolizes that Christians believe Jesus Christ died for everyone on the cross. The triumphant cross represents the earth with the cross on top. It symbolizes Jesus' triumph over anything we can face in the world. <clears throat> the anchor cross reminds Christians that Jesus is the anchor of our faith. The fish is one of the oldest Christian symbols. The letters from the Greek word for fish stand for Jesus, Christ, God, Son, Savior. Some of Jesus' disciples were fishermen. <clears throat> the Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Used together, they are, the, they are the symbol that Christians believe Jesus is the beginning and the end of all things. The dove. The dove is a symbol of peace and the Holy Spirit. It is shown pointing down to represent the Holy Spirit that appeared as a dove when Jesus was baptized. <clears throat> the keys. The keys are a symbol for the church in all the world. 
Jesus told us his friend Peter, <coughs> excuse me, Peter, that I will give you keys to heaven. So this means that Christians have to tell other people about Jesus. The chalice or cup is a symbol of the Mass, Eucharist, or Communion. It also represents God's forgiveness. The Lamb. The Lamb is a symbol for Jesus who is sometimes called the Lamb of God. The Heart. The heart is a symbol of love and reminds Christians that God is love. The crown. The crown is the symbol that Jesus is king. He shows that Christians believe Jesus is ruler over heaven and earth. The harp. The harp is a stringed instrument that symbolizes music to praise God. The angel. The angel reminds Christians of the angel who told the shepherds about the birth of Jesus. It can also represent the second coming of Jesus, which the Bible says will start with an angel blowing a trumpet. This is just a few of the symbols that will adorn our Christmas tree at Daviot Church next year. We hope everyone will come by to visit. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us for our Christmas celebration here in Strathnairn. We hope you enjoyed the stories and learning new things about Christmas. We wish you all a blessed and peaceful Christmas. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and all those for whom you have a care, this day and evermore. Amen.